Hi, my name is Lucy and I'm from Canada. Hello everyone, I'm Ruben, I'm in Spain and we both work for the operation team at Mozilla. Today we're going to be giving you a hopefully quick guide to the Mission Driven Resilience Project, which you might have heard about. Uh, maybe you read our wiki page or maybe you've seen our updates on discourse, our many, many updates. And maybe you're feeling a little bit overwhelmed by all this information and you just want to know what is this all about. So that's what we're going to be talking to you about today. Our vision why we're running this project is because we believe that Mozilla should have a healthy global community of people who want Mozilla to win, of mission-driven resilience. Uh, and that creating this community, we can build our mission in a way that none of our competitors can match and create a big foundation for the movement for the open web. That sounds good, hopefully, but yeah. why now? Why now? Well, basically last year what we did at the Open Innovation Team is that we ran uh, big research, uh, deeper than anything that we have done at Mozilla in the past. Uh, and basically what we were analyzing through internal interviews with more than a thousand surveys uh, and digging into more than 16 years of data. It was like crazy, but it, it, it allows us to uh, validate some of our assumptions that we have that around community. Uh, examples of this can be where people are contributing right now, where are active contributors contributing. We saw Firefox and localization and support really high there, but also there were some surprises in terms of how young our community is. Most of the people are really uh, young and we didn't know about that. Also, uh, the, the reasons for people to leave the community, most of them is because of professional or personal time. Uh, and that was also a, a, a more or less a surprise for us. But uh, the, the biggest thing, I think, for this research was to see how people organize themselves contributing to different areas and what is the relationship between So we saw a lot of people contributing to uh, a lot of non-technical uh, areas that were contributing to uh, some of them or all of them at the same time. And there were like a lot of people people doing this. There was more the instance, for example, to people who were just contributing to uh, coding or more technical areas. Absolutely. Uh, so I know what you're wondering. What is yeah, this? I'm wondering. <laughs> what is this? So these are the Power Rangers. Hopefully you're familiar with them. Uh, I know that doesn't answer your question. What are, why are you putting these Power Rangers up? What do they have to do with Mozilla contributors? Well, this is another way of kind of visualizing what Ruben was just talking about. These assumptions that we used to have about how our communities were structured. We used to think that people who did localization were different than people who did support, were different than reps, were different than people who were really involved in their regional communities or who did web literacy. But this research, Power Rangers Noise here, showed us that actually loads of people in our community are doing all of these things at the same time. And when we looked at the research and understood why, what was their motivation, it was the mission. These are people who are really motivated by Mozilla and by what Mozilla is doing to contribute in a whole bunch of different ways. And primarily we see evangelism, regional, Elton N, testing, sumo, and doing web literacy all in the same person, these mighty morphin, mission-driven resilience, if you will. So uh, we created this kind of persona, this definition of, to understand this like, group of people called the Mission for Resilience. They're volunteers who probably like many of you watching contribute to a number of different activities, are super invested in Mozilla as a mission and organization and contribute in different areas. And those main ones that Ruben always already showed, evangelism, teaching, advocating, localizing, documenting, community building, and testing. These yep. are a lot of them. Absolutely. So Mihul, many of you may know him. Just a random example of someone who's really a mission driven Mozilla He's a rep, he contributes to support, he's part of India's policy and advocacy task force, and a localization reviewer. So like many of you watching, uh, Mihul is someone who's really involved in lots of different areas. And uh, we also found some more stuff about that. Yeah, and I think it's, it's also time to have some real talk uh, around what we found. Because like uh, this research, together with the diversity and inclusion research, uh, so that, that we are not making it easy for these mission-driven Mozillians to succeed. To, to, because it's highly difficult. And we saw this in, in three streams of missed opportunities and bad experiences. 
The first one around inconsistency, how we were talking about this, like how different experiences in different areas, people who are contributing to all of them at the same time. Criteria, recognition, opportunities, it's, it's confusing for people. Missed opportunities in terms of uh, having to do things from scratch in terms of recruitment, uh, inefficiency, uh, duplicating efforts, burnout for, for some people asking so many things. And unfortunately, we saw uh, toxicity in our communities, in, in, in some cases, power accumulation, gatekeeping, uh, very reduced diversity, uh, low retention, and this is like really problematic. And there are like, these are the things that we really need to fix on, on, on the foundation of our communities. Absolutely. I remember when we were first giving this presentation in Berlin right after the launch of Firefox Quantum, and a contributor was talking about how she was localizing for Quantum, she was doing social media marketing for Quantum, and she was doing QA, and all of the different teams were asking things from her at the same time in like oh, crazy. A one week span, and how like difficult that was to manage, and how none of the teams were talking, and how it made it really hard to contribute in such an important way. Hmm. So this is a quick snapshot of our org structure, which shouldn't matter at all to any volunteer, but unfortunately we realized that we're shipping this structure out and asking volunteers to try and find the right people for the right projects. Uh, each of these teams has its own like website, its own registration system, and we were just forcing this complexity out rather than holding it internally like we should be. Mm -hmm. And this is not the way it should be. Uh, the, the experience should be rewarding, should be fun, but also should be impactful. Right? And, and with, this, with these three things, we are uh, trying to find a modern way for contributor dispute. And how we are trying to do that, basically with this project, we want to have two ways to solve that. Through guidelines and unified systems, one. And second, with clear direction to find high value engagement. Uh, because at the end of the day, we, we need to have this unified way to attract and engage people uh, uh, if we want Mozilla to win, as we were talking. Um, how we are going to be doing this? Let's talk first about uh, high value engagements. We have two things here. First, what we are calling enduring areas. These are the areas where we know for sure that are providing imp impact for Mozilla, value for Mozilla, and we can uh, direct people to these areas at any moment in time, localization, support, uh, things that we are doing at community development team, these are getting always value for, for Mozilla. We want to have a unified way and guidelines and, and cohesive experience uh, on, on all these areas. But we also want to give people the opportunity to engage into high value engagement in other areas through the year. So we want to also have each quarter to have at least a couple of campaigns uh, going on that are very time bound uh, and can be staff managed or staff supported. The, di the difference here is, for example, staff managed can be the Firefox Spring, the India Privacy Campaign, uh, Privacy Day. So these are things that are organized by staff or managed by staff. But we want to also give the space and the opportunity for grassroots efforts, uh, local ideas to surface and, and, and to have all the impact that they can have through staff supported campaigns. Examples of this can be the Reign of Rust, Privacy Month, excellence campaign coming from grassroots local knowledge that we empower as staff. We are not managing it, but we are empowering it. So this is about high value. But what about the guidelines and, and unified systems? The research that we did at the end of last year identified seven areas of action, which are the ones you hear on the screen right now. I'm going to quickly describe what they are. Group identities. We know uh, people self-organize into groups and communities, and we want to have a unified way to guidelines for guidelines, tracking, recognition, uh, etc. The existing groups. These are existing for how we recognize them. Diversity and inclusion, all the research that we uh, did together, uh, so Emma, Larissa, and other people were doing great research last year. We want process standards, uh, workflows, important the CG, the commu uh, community participation guidelines, how we apply this in a unified um, metrics. That's the third one. Metrics are going to be fundamental. We don't 
we don't want to have to be doing a research, a super deep research each year to, to know what's going on. We want to know what's going on at any given moment. So we will have better opportunities for recognition, for, uh, for checking the health of our communities, and metrics are going to be fundamental here. Uh, volunteer leadership. We've been advancing this uh, at the end of last year, if you have been checking uh, this course. And basically, what are the structures and the standards and the definition for leadership and responsibility roles and how we bring uh, a unified experience across uh, these areas. The same for recognition. How we apply this in a balanced way across all areas is a conversation that uh, we will be starting really soon. And the sixth one is resource distribution. We have been doing a great job uh, at the REPS program in terms of uh, distributing resources, but we want to, to see how we can provide this uh, to uh, more people in our community, not just uh, the REPS uh, community. And the last one, contributor journey and opportunity matching. Uh, this is really fundamental, how people yeah. find opportunities. Uh, how do we know these opportunities are really impactful? How we prioritize the ones that, that are really providing value to Mozilla? Because as volunteers, uh, people want to find impactful things to contribute their time. And, and also like an optimal Mozilla to the end of your journey at Mozilla when you decide it has to end. So it's, it's, it's also bringing a unified way across all areas. There's a lot there. Yeah. Uh, and in each of those areas, we're in a different stage advancing them, so they're not all going to happen overnight. As you're watching on Discourse and everything, you'll see that these move forward in different increments. So group structures, there's a pilot starting that you'll be able to read about on Discourse. Um, diversity and inclusion, all the community participation guideline works that Emma Irwin has already been working on. The big part of that and more coming. Volunteer leadership, check out the shared agreements. Uh, on discourse and see what's happening with there. There's also a pilot that's starting to look about implementation. Mm -hmm. Metrics, definitely happening with lots of other teams, starting to look at, okay, what are all the systems that we have? All the places that you're asked to register, uh, how can we make this a better experience to provide valuable metrics? Recognition, it's gonna be starting soon, uh, but is on the back bench right now and is going to advance throughout the year. Resource distribution, starting internally, uh, to look at what are all the teams that distribute funds and how can we make that a more unified system. And then that last number seven is really contingent on getting these other things mm -hmm. lined up. So we'll see that a little bit later. Whew, so what's next? What's right now? So there are things you can do to get engaged. So firstly, go on Discourse. We'll share the links with you, but uh, look for the Leadership by Design shared agreements, read through them, uh, and start hosting discussions in your community about what these sh shared agreements might look like. Um, as you're thinking about these categories and all of them, please write things on Discourse. Uh, use the tag leadership learning so that everyone can read them. We are going to be reading things tagged with leadership learning yeah. and will help boost what's happening so that as each community starts to advance all of these things, uh, we can be sharing and learning from each other. You can this also subscribe to uh, Museum yes. Resilience Stack there so you can follow up with uh, everything that we are publishing. Exactly. So that is it for us. We hope that this is helpful and you feel less overwhelmed. Um, and stay tuned. We'll be doing more. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks for watching. Bye.